think the rappers are ready. Yep. Oh yeah. Boosh. <laughs> I think we ought to do Facebook Live downstairs as well. I think we should. We want to see this. We want to see this. So you'll have to come back up and do it again if you Yeah, can. at the end, remember, if you're up to it, we'll do a little... Just a sample. Oh, yeah, this year. Later this year? I'm thinking later this morning. I'm thinking I <laughs> Later this year? <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so... <laughs> Elisa's deciding to stay with us, aren't you, Elisa? She she's too feel cool. She's too cool for that. <laughs> okay, so we're going um, to open it up for people to, to bring a small uh, word or whatever for our meet and share. We've been doing this now for quite some time. And I really think it's important not just to give the preachers a day off, amen, which is, uh, you know, which is okay, it's yeah. all right. Retired now, it's retired now. Well, I'm not just thinking of me, everybody, you know, we've, all the speakers get a bit of a day off when we do this. But God showed me years ago that, you know, the church in general overlooks the congregation. It overlooks the gifts that are, in the, that are, that are sat right in front of them. And, and quite often our church leaderships, you know, the, they're, they're all about forming committees and you know, elders and deacons and, and, and meetings and not about bringing out of people what's in people. Amen. And, and, you know, some of, the, some of the great worship people that we've got now. Um, I, I remember um, Paul Scanlon's place when they changed all theirs over. Most of the church left, you know, over half of the church left because they bust in all the down and outs and all the people that were sleeping rough and they bust them in into Bradford and the church people didn't like it and a lot of people left because they changed it up. But you know what, those very people that they bust in, they lead their worship now. Yeah. And, and they're leading their youth groups. And they're actually, they're actually leading things. So don't overlook when you pass somebody who's down. Listen, it doesn't mean they're out. Amen. Okay. So, so I just want to encourage you. Now, last week, you know, we had our... I'm just going to do my little five minute and then we're opening it up for everybody else. So if you join praise and worship, maybe something good's happened. Or even something negative. You know, negatives out there. Um, but if, as long as we keep it that, you know, God's good and good all the time and he's able to see us through these situations. <coughs> and so we had a dedication last week of um, Little River Jackson, who's, uh, what you call it, Carly and Jerry. Jerry, Carly and Jerry, I should remember them. Tom and Jerry, I should easily remember them. <laughs> Carly and Jerry's, and so... <laughs> oh, is that on there? Oh, praise the Lord. So, um... <coughs> So Carly and Jerry and everybody was there and we had a great time. Um, but you know, I just want to I want to encourage people. You know, we, we should be in the we should be in the building trade and not the demolition business. Amen. Amen. We should be about building people up, irrespective of their sexuality, their colour, their creed, their belief system, or whatever. And so, I just want to go on record to say that you know, um, there were some people at that dedication who was of of a different. How shall we say sexual orientation to what we are and um, and I knew that when we did the dedication and so I think a lot of churches would and and the feedback we got from these from these girls was that it was nice to not be judged yeah. and you listen I'm not the judge hey amen I'm for you and and so you know when and this is this is some revelation that I got and uh, hopefully it'll help people help people here but you see, when, jo when Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 3, unless you're born again, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, or you will not see the kingdom of heaven. You know what, we've made that the whole thing, that unless you're born again, you won't get into the kingdom of heaven. In fact, we've said if, if, if you don't get born again, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But you know, God turned that around to me and said, listen, that wasn't the objective of getting born again. The objective of getting born again was not to get you into the kingdom of heaven, it was to get the kingdom of heaven into you. Amen. And you see, that's a massive difference. Massive difference. You see, the reason people don't understand church, people don't understand spiritual things, is because they're not born again. But the reason they, that we're born again is not just so that we can rule and reign with Jesus for eternity, it's to get, not to get us into the kingdom of God, it's to get the kingdom of God into us. Get that into the and get that into these people by loving them and not judging them and guess what they may get born again and then their hearts change their condition changes and what happened we didn't judge people 
And so listen, I say to people who judge all the time, be very, very careful. Because yeah. Jesus said, the measure you use in judgment will be used against you. Yeah. And I always say, when I'm pointing like that, there's three <laughs> pointing back at me. <coughs> when I start wagging the finger. And so, so listen, we're not watering this down. We're not, we're not trying to be anything different. But I'm just trying to encourage you that, you know, God wants us to love people. And he wants us to not judge people. Yeah. And listen, aren't you pleased your, your fellow you know, church people don't judge you? Amen. Aren't you pleased when you stand up here, not everybody's judging you? Yeah. You yeah. see, it's not about judgment, it's about grace. And it's about loving kindness. You see, when the loving kindness of God appeared, that changed everything. Yeah. And so likewise, everybody watching on YouTube and Facebook Live, listen, Jesus loves you. God's not mad at you, he's madly in love with you. Amen. He's got a plan for you, just the same as everybody else. Listen, say yes to Jesus. Get Amen. the kingdom of God into you. Yeah, Amen. Okay, so that's just my little bit. So, who's next? <laughs> Do you know what I'm going hey. to... I'm not going to share anything, but what you said reminded me. Right, because Lane's our quiet one. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I am loud and proud, and God told me to That's be that good. way, so I'm gonna be. Who you are? <laughs> exactly. Who you are? No, do you know what? Do you know as he was talking about judge, um, people judging and stuff? Like, um, I've been asked to share my testimony at the bridge, and yeah. and I've always said my whole Christian walk, I will never share my testimony, right? Because there's bits in there I don't want to share, but God's given me a way to share it without sharing the bits I don't need to share yeah. for everybody else, right? And the reason I didn't want to share it is because of that judgment that was placed on me. And my whole life has been about people judging me for being loud, yeah. for being a teenage mum, for being whatever they chose to judge me about. You know, and it's been a whole journey where people have just placed judgment on me, judgment on me. I'm a bit of a, you know what, I'm not letting people win. I'm going to put this mask on. But when you go through a journey with Jesus, it's like you get to that point where actually you don't need to put a mask on anymore because you realise, you sang the song, I am a child of God. It takes a long time once you've heard that to realise that you actually are really a child of God. You hear that message, but over time, you actually believe that message for yourself. And I've got to say, anybody who is facing judgment, get in the word of God and just make sure that you realise that you are a child of God and what God says about you. Don't put the word world's view on yourself don't accept the world's view and I'll just tell a funny story which got me to be the loud and proud <laughs> <laughs> we went to Cherish and I'd been been out for a meal in between the meetings and there were some Christian ladies not from our church from different churches and um, there was basically criticizing me for being loud now I don't believe God gave me this mouth to sit and be quiet it's too <laughs> bloody loud to be quiet <laughs> and and I was like do you know what I'm really fed up with Christian women criticizing who God created me to be so I was bold enough to turn around to them and say do you know what actually I think you're being very disrespectful to our father as if you really are this is who God's created me to be and if we're created in his image and I'm created to be this loud person and you're criticizing me then you're criticizing God's plan because he doesn't make mistakes and it was just like these women's faces were just like whoa and I was like right that's it we goes back to the arena <laughs> and this was the funny bit we get um, we get uh, sat in the arena and they're doing like a bit of a fun activity before the start of the meeting and you know they go around the crowd is there anybody from Denmark is there anybody from England and we're all like woo like this and I get picked out to go on the stage. Uh, <laughs> so what God asks us to do, this is not this cherish, it's last year. Um, and what, he, what, he asked, what we were asked to do was, I um, don't know if you've ever seen the game Speak Out. So, and I had to put the mouthpiece in, right? And we had to read out this statement, which was basically, I am a, ch I, you know, I am a beautiful love daughter of the almighty God. And it was this big paragraph and it was basically the loudest thing. Now, up until that point, you pass the mic to me, I instantly criticise myself as a protection mechanism before others do. And I say, well, those of you that know me, I don't need a mic, but I'll use it to be polite. And I do that. <laughs> and I've always done that. But that's my way of protecting me because someone is going to criticise me. So I criticise myself first because that gives them a licence to do it. Well, not anymore. God oh, said to me, you get up there and you be loud and proud. I mean, so we're in an arena like loads of women. 
and all my days I rocked the roof, didn't I? I was so loud, I was like this with my loudest voice and I was just like, yeah, that's it. And I thought, I am never going to be ashamed to be who I am anymore because God created me this way and, you know, you've got to stop listening to what people say and stop listening to what God says. <laughs> Even if I do it by my daughter. So it's interesting, you see. I came in the car thinking about this judgment thing, and already God's showing people. So, how many of you know that? You know, we're not here by accident. These are divine appointments. We haven't just wasted. We're not here just to. I spoke the other week, didn't I, about um, about length of days. You know, our average lifespan is eighty-one point six years. That equates to seven hundred nine thousand six hundred forty hours. Guess what? We've used three or four already today. You know, we've, we've used a lot since yesterday. What are we doing? What have, where have we been? What have we done? I went fishing yesterday. Praise God for fishing, amen. <laughs> but guess what? That's another ten, eight hours gone. I didn't do bad, actually, by the way. Anyway, but anyway. So, uh, <laughs> so, Wendy, have you, have you got to... Just only briefly. Oh, briefly. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was mainly just following on from what um, Elaine said and I love um, the fact that the word tells us that we've already been judged and uh, I remember somebody said to me when you, you know, stand at the pearly gates God's going to show a video of all your life and all what you've done but th that won't happen because we've already been judged and we've already been judged righteous and I love it where it says in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 it says of him who are in Christ Jesus who of God is made, he's made unto us wisdom, so he's judged as wise, he's judged as righteous, right standing with him, and he's actually judged as holy. So we have already been judged, we've all already been judged all these things, we've already been judged worthy, we've already been judged holy, we've already been made, judged right standing with him, we've already been judged and he calls us healed, he calls us delivered, all these things so we've we have already been judged but we've been made whole holy and righteous in him and that's the good news you know, that we want to tell people and i think it, you know it's fantastic that we stand right before before god and that yeah. we are his children and that he's cheering us on and that he loves <coughs> us amen, amen. i was brief wendy <laughs> anybody else then so kenny come on brother I will just add to that one. I said 81.6 hours of 709,000, sorry, 81.6 years and 709,000 hours. That if you're 81.6, don't panic. You know, <laughs> it's an average, okay? You know, it's an average. Tony said, my me, me mother's 82 next week, so we'll better give her a ring on that. Amen. Um, I just want to continue with what Tom and Elaine and I've said because that is very crucial. You see, we are born uniquely, mm -hmm. and your your uniqueness is what makes you stand out. Yeah. I watched um, um, British Got Talent. Everybody that watched saw the 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 guy with learning difficulties. Mm -hmm. It was uniquely made to be like that, yeah. Yeah. and he identified his uniqueness and was able to come out with that uniqueness mm. and that is has made him. Mm. You see, we get criticized a lot and we end up criticizing ourselves as, as well. Yeah. Mm. You know, I used to be I used to be a stammerer. I stutter a lot, you know, and in class I would keep quiet because my, my teacher was holding me back. If I raised my hand to outside, he would not even call me. Before I could make a statement, I would spend maybe 10 minutes, <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> you know, and so that was what I, I lived my life in secondary school. When I go to the university, the same thing. I remember my first speech. I stuttered, I stuttered, and it took me long and I was, I was so much embarrassed. But it got to a point when I started seeing my uniqueness. I, I, I just pray to God, say I need the boldness for me to, to stand up and to stand up and speak. You know, and as I started practicing. Yeah. And now un unless I tell you you will not know I stutter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you see me angry, you will not know you, you will not know. <laughs> but you see, you see, I can stand and speak for the next three hours without even a single stutter. Yeah. I refused 
to be pulled down by anybody. And we are in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. And so we are in the kingdom. There are some forces against us. So as we are moving, and forces can come in several ways. It can come with the people's opinion about us. <coughs> that, that's a force holding us down. It can come by unnecessary comments from our colleagues, even from our, from anybody, mm. to hold us backward because we have advancing forcefully. Mm. So let us bear in mind that we're in the kingdom of God, yeah. and Satan is not happy about it. <laughs> so he will do everything because he knows what I'm going to achieve. He knows what you are going to achieve in God's kingdom. So he will devise every means. That's what the Bible says, we should not be weary, we should, we should not be ignorant of devil's devices. Mm -hmm. It comes in different ways. Mm -hmm. But each time it comes, it's exposed by God. Amen. 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 Awesome. Okay, anybody else? And then we're going to... I'll, I'll say something. Yes, Sam? I was thinking about the suttering there. Norman Collier made a business out of that, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Norman yeah. Collier. Yeah. He was a suttering guy. Um, well, much like you were saying, Elaine, about mm. being loud and, and proud, um, I think I've got like that I'm on the other side of the scale right. because I think I'm quite quiet. And, and over the years, people have said, oh, you're so quiet, and you're so this, <laughs> and you're so that. And, uh, and then I try to be different. Yeah. Um, and people say, well, you're always kind and things. So I try to be unkind. I've tried to be the opposite <laughs> of what people have said. And quite you're recently... Not being unkind. Sorry? You're not capable of being unkind. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I've exactly. tried to be unkind. I've tried to be hard. I've tried to be um, Machiavellian. I cannot do it. Mm. I just cannot do it and, and much like you I think I've come to the conclusion well look I am who I am mm. yeah. um, if you don't like me well that's absolutely fine so I don't that's mind that's you know I can move on to somebody else but <laughs> um, quite, quite recently um, somebody came up to me and said Anne you've got beautiful hair You've got really beautiful hair. But I think if you have it cut in a modern style, what? it'll change it'll change you. So you can go out and sort of I think it was like find a man and I'm thinking, oh my goodness me, that is like the last thing I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> go I mean I'd love to be having pink hair, but you know um, <laughs> sort of do all this and then old slinky dresses and I'm thinking I can't, I just, I just can't do it. But what I'm getting to is this last month has actually been horrendous in all sorts of different ways. And um, it, it's like, there's a book called Fear the Fear and Do It Anyway. But then looking and reading through the Bible, it's about if you're in fear, you're not in faith yeah, so temper that you know yeah. and it is true training it's true training your own right. heart and your own right. mind and yeah. your own your own body because yeah. sometimes it's hard to take that first step of faith mm -hmm. and all I can say is I actually like who I am That's yeah. and, um, we like who you are really. yeah. thank you and uh, you know if if this next year is is going to develop into what I feel in my heart's going to develop. I don't need to be loud. I don't need to be who I'm not. Yeah. I need to be yeah. who I am to go onward and forward work, yeah. and do what God wants me to do. Amen. Amen. Okay, so really, again, we're back to where we started from. <laughs> Celebrate your uniqueness. Celebrate who you are. And and and. I, I don't know if you've worked this out, but people can spot a, a fake a mile off. Yeah. They can spot a fake a mile off. When you try and be like somebody else, when you try and behave like somebody else, listen, it does not work. No. It's because that's how God wired you. It's mm -hmm. how your DNA, you've got a God-given DNA that's created to be exactly how you are. So if you don't like being you know, tall, you don't like being small, guess what? It's tough. It's your DNA. It's in you. God made you to be like that way, you know? Prince, the, the pop star, he used to wear high heels everywhere. And, and Tom Cruise has all his shoes yeah. uh, 
disguised with heels in them because he don't like being five foot two. Listen, Tom Cruise, celebrate who you are. Prince is not here anymore. Listen, don't try and change things that cannot be changed. There are some things that are genetically created by God. The colour of your, you know, your skin and everything. Celebrate who you are. Celebrate who you are. And if you're loud, praise God. If you're not loud, praise God. Listen, we, we, we all make a great team, don't we, together? Yeah. England are playing today. <laughs> oh, everybody that went like that. That can't have been a boo-hoo. England are playing today. And listen, if they don't play as a team, they're going to lose. And you know, life's like that. If we don't play as a team, we lose. And so it's not about individuals. No matter if you're Ronaldo or whoever you are. It's pretty good, by the way. But it's better if you're in a team. So, uh, so be in a team today. So we're going to have communion now. Does anybody else want to share anything before I close it? And then we're going to have communion. Marco Norman does a little talk. And everybody, everybody enjoy that. I always enjoy these meeting shows. I, I love hearing. I am a bit of a people person. I like to find, find you know what people are about and what makes people tick and and then try and develop that. That's, that's the skills of leaders in church. It's not to dominate, it's to, it's to draw out of people and find what talents and abilities and get them, sat, get them you know, passionate about that. So, uh, okay, Marco. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yeah, just to follow on from that, um, what you were saying there about your own uniqueness. When I got born again, first of all, because I'm a fairly quiet sort of personality trait, I thought you had to have like a personality transplant or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. And I was going through my, my Christian journey and I used to think one day I'll become bold or whatever. But I did not realise I was mixing up boldness with loudness or just someone with a, a different personality trait. Mm. So that's something important to know about. And I remember when I first came to Victory Church, um, we went out to the front because somebody was praying a particular theme. And when they prayed for me, because they didn't know me at the time, one of the things they said was, don't follow these people that you think are really up there or whatever, and don't, don't think that loudness or all of this is what you need. It's not. Yeah. It's the boldness, which Kenny spoke on a while ago. Mm. It's completely different. Mm. And I mentioned before, when I used to be at school, if the teacher had said to us, next week, right, you're preparing a five-minute talk, <laughs> and you're all going to share it. Well, I'd rather they did anything to me than that. I would have done anything. So for the next full week, I'm in agonies, wondering what on earth is going to happen. Do I skive off school? What do I do? Etc. But somehow, I don't know how I got through it. But you see, like Kenny was referring to that stammer, the same with me when I got born again. God will use skills you've got, gifts he's given to you, hone them. And this last week, for work most of the time now, I stand up and speak in front of people. So God can use different things as well. So, so even if you've got a, a talent or ability that seems still quite in its infancy, God still is probably developing that in you. So don't just chuck it out and think, oh, that's rubbish. <laughs> don't despise those small beginnings because you've probably got there. It's like the diamond, isn't it? When you don't dig a diamond out of the mine, all cut and beautiful. It needs a lot of expertise mm. on that to cut it in the right way. It's the same with us, isn't it? We're all diamonds in God's kingdom. So I wanted to bring a word about communion. And it's a scripture verse from Romans chapter 8. This is a very key verse for us as well. It's Romans 8 verse 1. So I'll read it out. So now there is no condemnation for those who, believe, who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit feed you to, um, has freed you from the power of sin that to what that leads to death so there is no condemnation that's the key bit there not so there is partial freedom from it there is a little bit there is no condemnation so when I was thinking about that um, I was thinking in picture form first of all if anybody likes gardening I used to do a bit of gardening and if you ever saw a plant start to sprout and the leaves were a bit I don't know, got a bit funny colour or something like that. You probably wouldn't just treat the leaf. You would probably think to yourself, there's something wrong with the plant, isn't there? Mm. I think the root or some, something's going wrong here. And you get to the root of the problem. But it's the same thing in people's lives. I think we see the leaves of 
the symptoms of the curse, don't we? We see people struggling with poverty mentality, sicknesses, destructive habits, all kinds of stuff, which are kind of the leaves of that negative thing that's happening. So if you'd ask the experts um, what is going wrong here, a lot of people would say, if you ask the psychologists or things like that, it's definitely stress. Stress is the problem that is causing the problem. But we would say, mm -hmm. is it stress? Or does the root go a little bit deeper still? Mm -hmm. So you'd ask some more experts <coughs> and they would probably say, it's not stress, right? That's not the real root. The real root is fear. Fear of death, fear of dying, fear of illness, fear of lack, fear of this, fear of that. Maybe that could be it, but is that the real root or is it a little bit deeper still? But the Bible's quite clear on it, and I've just read the verse <coughs> out. The real root of the problem is condemnation when we condemn ourselves, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And that's really, through that can develop the symptoms of the curse, and we'll see, we see that all around us. So if you go back into the Genesis in chapter three, <coughs> Adam and Eve, the rebellion against God, <coughs> taking the fruit, eyes have been opened, realize the rebellion. So before the condemnation and everything else, before all the stress and before Adam was maybe facing poverty or struggling and striving or whatever, stress was on the scene straight away. He was getting stressed out. You know he'd done wrong. Oh, I'm stressed out about it all. And if you go back even higher up in the chapter, he was hiding, wasn't he? Do you remember that bit? I heard you in the garden, so I hid from you because I was ashamed. I felt condemned and shameful and all the rest of it. So there was a fear. So there was stress and there was fear, but the starting point of it, I feel condemned, I feel, I feel awful. Self-condemnation. So that was really the root starting point. For Adam. And all of us will have a testimony, won't we? That would involve condemnation. If you think back to when you got born again, we were all being condemned. And it's easy, even as believers now, to buy into being condemned. But we're free from all that. We just read the verse there. There's no condemnation there. No matter what your week's been like. Why? Because Jesus went to the cross to suffer and die, take all your sicknesses and sin in his body, punished for all of that. He was condemned. So we don't have to be. Mm, yeah. Awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Now, so the enemy now can't stitch us all up with condemnation unless we choose to receive it. Yeah. But we don't have to choose to receive it because we're free from all of that, hallelujah. So we, as we've already mentioned earlier, we have to renew this. You know, I've been speaking to, um, one of the things I do in public health, we have to talk to the work coaches. They, used to, they work in the job centres, Grantham and Sleaford and Boston, and all those. And it's been quite interesting really because a lot of stuff I've been telling them is really out of here. Yeah. Positive affirmations, the battles in your mind, what you speak is what you get all of this kind of stuff. And as I thought about it afterwards, I thought, I've almost been preaching to them, but not preaching, if you like. So, condemnation is the key, but we're free from all that. So we're now gonna share together. We're just gonna say, would anybody like just to pass the items around? Thank you, Elaine. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you for that. And we'll share that together. So that's unity as well, isn't it? Because as I was sat down there earlier as well, the other thing that struck me was, the unity. Yeah. Years ago, you know, some of you will know that I take my mum to the Methodist church every other week and I share it with my sister. Years ago, I would have gone to the Methodist church and thought, oh, I don't want to go here, it's horrible. It's so boring. I want to go to a proper church where it preaches the word and be a grace like that. But what I've realised is when you love the Lord, you've got the kingdom within you, your ears are open, yeah. whatever church I'm sitting in. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And particularly now I've been to the persecuted church on some of the mission trips, you realise that these, there's such unity there. Nobody goes, oh, I'm, by the way, I, I'm a Catholic or I'm a this or I'm a that. They don't say that. They say, I'm a believer. That's what they say. Yeah. So there's the unity that we want to see again in the church in Britain. This is where the Lord commands the blessing. This is the powerful thing. When that unity comes, and as Elaine will tell you, we're praying particularly at the minute for the unity of believers in Immingham. Yeah. There's some powerful things happening there. Yeah. But it's the same in Grimsby or wherever. Mm. Once that starts to come on board, mm. it's, it's already happening. It is already yeah. happening. 
and the Lord is still building his church. He has not finished. He's not said, oh, that's it for now. Thanks very much. Still building his church. So these are powerful symbols now of what he has achieved for us. So we are free from all condemnation. Amen. So I don't know if we've got the words. We haven't got them on that laptop, Marco. No problem, Tom. We'll just take it together. Okay. So let's, shall we all stand together? Yeah. Share our unity. And we've got the symbol of Jesus' broken body. Thank you, Lord, for your broken body. <coughs> it was broken for us, for our healing Hallelujah. and our family's healing. Amen. We thank you that because of the stripes you received and the beatings you received, all those that are sick that are named in my heart are healed in Jesus' name. I receive your healing. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the, for the blood, the symbol of the new covenant <clears throat> cut in your own blood. And we thank you and we rejoice with the righteous because we are righteous. And we thank you, Lord, for our healing, our wholeness, our preservation, our prosperity, our favour, all of the blessings that we receive through what you achieved on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I just wanted to quickly speak about, as well, the other thing that came into my mind. Our brothers and sisters throughout the nations of the world, many of them cannot do that, as you probably realise just now. In public, they can't even speak your name. So we just want to speak over them right now, whatever nation they may be residing in, Lord. And just send out your word right now, that they would know your uplifting arm, the presence of your Holy Spirit, the strength of their brothers and sisters, praying for them and they would know your closeness at this time in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Glory Amen. Thanks, Thank you Marco Okay so just to end then I've just reminded there that we, um, we've got some announcements uh, for, for things that are scheduled but uh, Wednesdays is our uh, prayer night and Bible study night so it's 7 while 8 <clears throat> is the Bible study and then 8 while 9 we do alternate uh, one week we do sort of a general prayer thing and then the next week we pray for nations and pray for countries and Marco and Judy and people we bring flags in and stuff like this and I've just reminded that I've just come back from Bulgaria and we've had a, we've had a property I, I sent um, uh, Marco a, a picture of this we've had a property in Bulgaria for 10 years now and so we We've been everywhere around the town of Sozopo, which is, Sozo is saved, Pole City, so it's City of Salvation. And they've got a great big banner in the streets, haven't they, Wendy, that says, Sozopo, City of Salvation. So it's a great, it's a great advertisement. Um, and it, it, was, it was a founding uh, a nation of Christianity in, in, that, in that area of the Black Sea. But we've been there for 10 years, and, um, but we've bought a new property. So our, our new property is only 500 metres away from our old one, something like that, isn't it, when? And, uh, and so I was, I was on the, we've got like a, a top deck, which is really nice, and uh, sunbathing and just relaxing and chilling, you know, chilling. And, um, and, I, and I looked up and at the back was the, the Korean flag. And I thought, can't be. I must, I must have had some dodgy food or something. And there's a flag, a huge flag, blowing in the wind and it was the Korean flag that we just prayed for a, a little while before that and so anyway we went up and, and at the back of our property is the Korean embassy yeah. the United <laughs> Korean embassy and we'd never even seen it before have you Wendy and so you might think well what's that don't mean anything well it does because look what's happening now in Korea you know and who would have said even a year ago yeah what's happened in Korea and so don't despise praying for situations see sometimes I'm going to be honest when we come and we go right we're going to pray for Russia I'm like yeah right you know it's we're going to pray for China 
what? You know, China's a huge place. How can we make a difference? How can we make a difference praying for countries? We can't make any difference paying for a whole country, can we? Unless it's, you know, Liechtenstein or something, a little tiny place. But, you know, prayer works. And, and we've been praying over these countries, South Korea, North Korea, Vietnam, Cambodia, all these places, Sudan, and, and, and guess what? It's not about working it all out. It's just praying for these situations by faith and believing situations will change there. And uh, what a what a what a what a what a, a, a revolution going on in Korea. Who would say? Who would have said that even a year ago? So don't despise when somebody asks you to pray for something. When you come to the prayer meeting and we say we're going to pray for Australia or we're going to pray for New Zealand, guess what? Words are powerful. Words are really powerful. And, 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 and there are powers and principalities out there that are unseen that are listening to your voice. And what are you going to voice? Are you going to voice, are you, going to voice you know, victory in these situations? Uh, uni unification in these situations? Or are you going to vote doubt, vote, vote doubt and unbelief? England are playing today. Let's cheer them on, not pull them down. The papers are all the time, aren't they? Let's cheer them on. And, and, and we're all guilty of it to a degree. So, so, so let's cheer them on. Let's cheer. We're in a team together. So, so it's, it, thank you for being here today for the victory uh, meet and share, and uh, pass it on. So uh, you're awesome. Uh, what we think about um, Korea? Um, I don't know if you saw, but um, the three hostages, um, American hostages, who was in the prison there, and um, they got. Um, I read yesterday that um, they've been released. Okay. They, they uh, released the three. And one of the hostages, um, Trump obviously uh, um, <coughs> organised it, but he said uh, while he was in prison, being tortured, etc., he said he actually had a dream wow. and he actually saw um, President Trump coming to get him and wow. to release him. Wow. And then he said on the way back you know, that actually became a reality. Wow. Awesome. So they was praying in prison and um, you know, that actually became, um, wow. that's, that's awesome. like a dream come true, isn't it, for, for them? I know other people have been praying for Korea as well. It's yeah. just the start, isn't it? Yeah. So for all those people who pulled Trump down and stuff like that, when when he was getting in, you know, there was all the, all the, I was one of them. You know, I thought you can't put yeah. this yeah. guy in charge of the nuclear country. You know. <coughs> but guess what? He's stopped it. He's, he's made. He's, he's kept to a lot of his promises. And, and listen, we're not to be political. We're to pray for governments, amen. Not get involved in whether we agree with them or we agree with Hillary Clinton or, or we agree with Labour, we agree. Listen, whatever government's in, we have to pray for that government, whether, whether you like it or not. Don't pull them down, don't detract and say, oh, you know, Labour are going down this route and Conservatives are going down this and the Liberals are this and the Green Party. Listen, whoever, whoever we elect in, it's like the Brexit thing. We're, we're going, we're leaving, don't waste breath. 709,000 hours you've got of 81.6 81, years. Why waste it on Brexit? Who gives, a, who gives a rip whether, you know, whether it takes a year, two years? We voted it in. It was 51%. It was only four. We voted it in. That's how we do it. So deal with it. Take your thumb out of your mouth and crack on. Amen. So well, coffee and things are being served over there. Yes, you can pass that round. And the notice is one notice in the way. Uh, we've got a live conference coming up um, on Saturday, um, which is uh, great. And uh, the speakers that we've got are uh, Ian uh, Disley, and he's got a, he's a Christian uh, from the Baptist Church, and he's got a private practice in Grimsby. So he's going to be speaking. Cause some people said that they wanted more practical tips last time. So he's going to be speaking. And uh, Dr. Bodo, who's Hung Hungarian. Um, he's the consultant in Grimsby, he's going to be speaking, so it's addressing any mental health problems, stress, anxiety, etc. But if you're coming, um, even if you're helping, could you just register with Kenny and uh, no, just invite people people to come? And you've got to register on Eventbrite then? Yeah, well, Kenny can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, or well, send a text message, I can give you the number. Yes. The telephone number. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can send a text uh, Just message. so we know how many people are coming.